Thanks everyone. Uh, so glad to be here today again to share some research uh, on the main drivers of change uh, in the sports market. Today I'll, I'll particularly focus on one of those drivers which we covered uh, a lot in our research and I've tried to condense uh, as much insight as possible in a short presentation to give everyone some actionable information uh, but also to set the scene for some of the talks uh, we'll see afterwards. I hope you enjoy it, but please provide some feedback on it, as it's always appreciated. And do talk to me if you want, uh, because I'll be around for most of the event. But let's make a start. And let's start from the three drivers of change uh, identified by uh, IABM in, uh, this year. Uh, media tech uh, is converging, transforming, and becoming more resilient. As I said before, we will mostly focus uh, uh, on one of those drivers, which is convergence, which is perhaps uh, the most forward-looking driver of the three, and I think arguably the most revolutionary for the industry uh, as well. Through convergence, media businesses uh, are um, focusing on engaging with the younger generations uh, and also on augmenting uh, and diversifying their revenue streams. And to do so, uh, they are increasingly investing on a uh, in a mixture of tech, uh, including uh, monetization tech, uh, uh, tech to uh, power in increasingly interactive consumer experiences uh, and data analytics, for example. I think this trend is relevant to the whole industry, but I think it's particularly relevant to the sports sector. So now, before talking a little bit about this, uh, let's define a bit better what convergence uh, is. And we can do so by looking at how the, the industry, I think, has changed uh, in the last few uh, years. Before, uh, different sectors in media entertainment were clearly separated, and I think we're not really influencing each other. But now this is not the case anymore, as the lines of demarcation between different industries uh, are increasingly bl blurring, and different sectors uh, are increasingly influencing each other. Although I think convergence is operating uh, uh, in multiple directions, uh, we could argue that there is perhaps one sector that is, that is influencing the others uh, more significantly. Gaming has, in fact, become, uh, uh, I think, the, the epicenter of uh, convergence and uh, of change uh, uh, in the media entertainment industry, as you can see from some of the major initiatives reported on this slide. You can see that companies in sectors such as broadcast, uh, streaming, uh, social media, and publishing uh, have all doubled down on interactivity recently through uh, an increasing focus uh, on gamification. Uh, but the, the question is, why has this happened? And this will allow us to talk a little bit about what's driven this, which, uh, as usual, has been the, the consumer and the changing viewing habits. Uh, and you can see from this chart illustrating 2021 sports consumption habits that uh, new generations such as Gen Z consume media uh, and sports in a radically different way. We could argue that their consumption patterns uh, are more mixed and therefore more demanding. They spend more time on activities such as streaming, social media, gaming, and on-demand content compared to older generation who instead prefer a more live and uh, linear experience. Here I've included some more uh, stats that add some interesting elements, I think. Uh, younger generations are also more likely to uh, watch content on mobile devices, uh, to interact with stats during sports broadcasts, uh, and to watch content on two screens at once. Moreover, they do not only enjoy gaming, but they also en enjoy things that are related to gaming, such as fantasy games, for example. And this is, again, to show that uh, uh, their consumption patterns are mixed, requiring uh, media businesses to deliver complex experiences to them. And media businesses have noticed this, uh, particularly as consumption on their traditional uh, platforms has decreased. And I think Disney is a good example uh, of this, uh, 
as uh, um, basically e ESPN cable subscribers declined significantly between uh, 2011 and 2021. And uh, the company decided to bet everything on its direct-to-consumer push to reverse this trend, as well as on, on the other platforms, of course. I've included here a quote from Disney CEO, uh, who said of, at the start of the year that the company's sports proposition should go beyond direct-to-consumer and encompass things such as gaming, betting, and the metaverse to enable audiences to actively engage with content, which is very much consistent with the viewing trends we've just seen. Though it's not just Disney doing that, uh, uh, more companies in the sports industry uh, have uh, um, done convergence-related initiatives. You can see here Fubo, Bali, and DAZN as an example. Uh, they, they've all made acquisitions uh, and initiatives uh, related to convergence, particularly on gaming, uh, uh, batting uh, and commerce functionalities for their platform. Below I've included the, you know, the, the objectives, the two main objectives, uh, business objectives I've talked about before. One is uh, engaging with younger generations who are, have different viewing habits and the other is augmenting and diversifying revenue streams. And these trends I think are very much consistent with uh, IABM data. Uh, on content supply chain investment. You can see that consumer monetize are the uh, top spending categories in the industry, and the top investment area there in terms of activity is uh, data analytics, which reflects, I think, uh, media business's strategic focus on direct-to-consumer business models and consumer engagement uh, through the, the use of data. Our con convergence, I think, is also costly, and I think a good example of this uh, is the latest uh, uh, Super Bowl, the 2022 Super Bowl. Uh, for this event, more consumers streamed uh, the match online uh, through OTT, and they bet on the event uh, more, uh, more than in 2021, which led to increases in uh, latency for providers delivering uh, this event. And latency is not increasing uh, uh, only in distribution, but in, in production too, as uh, media businesses uh, increasingly look at activities such as virtual production. I think that the growth of virtual production during the pandemic uh, has been clear from the data, although it's not just about that. I think it's also, it, there is a general tendency towards making content more immersive and interactive uh, for consumers. And this has led some media companies to look at the edge, uh, as you can see from this slide, to enable a lower latency experience for, for content creators, which is another effect of convergence on technology. <coughs> this is some more data, which shows some more trends across the content supply chain. First, in production, most companies focus on uh, remote production, and a lot of them increasingly focus on decentralized uh, production models. Uh, and this has in turn made connectivity more of a priority uh, in the industry as Connect has become uh, the third most important segment in terms of investment after consumer monetize. Uh, most businesses remain focused on uh, uh, internet and IP connectivity, uh, although uh, we could argue that compared to before, uh, they are focused on a mixture of connectivity solutions uh, uh, related to different use cases including those use cases uh, that are related to uh, convergence. Though, let's, just, let's take a step back. Uh, I showed Fubo before, and I wanted to examine the, the case study of Fubo TV uh, to show some of the current threats to convergence, which I've seen, uh, I'm sure you've seen something in the news as well. Uh, because Fubo TV has been a, an early investor in convergence, uh, making uh, two acquisitions on, uh, in, in betting and data technology, and also launching a, a lot of initiatives between 2021 and 2022, which are related to convergence. However, last month, uh, Fubo TV announced that it would discontinue uh, Fubo Gaming and Sportsbook uh, due to the impact of the macroeconomic environment uh, on their profitability. And the question is, why has this happened? I think one, from a macro perspective, uh, uh, if we look at that, one of the main highlights uh, in the last few months has been uh, uh, inflation. Inflation has, of course, had a, a negative impact on consumer sentiment and spending, including uh, discretionary spending uh, 
which includes things such as uh, um, entertainment and betting, of course. And of course, uh, the uh, lifting of the pandemic-induced restrictions, uh, particularly uh, recently, has led to an inevitable shift in consumer behavior back to physical business models. And uh, uh, you can see this uh, having an effect uh, on the growth trajectory of Twitch, for example. Digital consumption uh, uh, remains high, uh, though it has slowed down compared to uh, what we've seen during the pandemic. And I think this does, leads us well to talk about uh, the metaverse and Web3, which I know will be covered today. And for, for many, these concepts represent the next phase for convergence, the future of convergence. You can see here the, the, the quote from Mark Zuckerberg talking about his vision for the metaverse. Of course, you know that recently Meta has cut a sizable share of its staff, uh, which is consistent with some of the threats we've we, we just seen. But I think also the concept of the metaverse is consistent with some of the viewing trends we've seen earlier, and also the concept of Web3, if we want to separate the two. And here I've included some, uh, some stats that are more specific to this, to, to Web3 and the metaverse. First, we can see that uh, uh, crypto, crypto ownership is um, uh, positively correlated with sports fandom and inversely correlated with age. Uh, which I found interesting. And also age is a factor when it comes to uh, interest uh, in attending a live event in the metaverse. You can see that the younger generations are more likely to do so, uh, which again shows that they're more likely to actively engage with content and demand a different consumer experience. Uh, however, interest is not enough. Uh, as the, the metaverse has several orders to, be, uh, to overcome to uh, fulfill its promise. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail in terms of this, but I think one of the main ones is, is consumer adoption. Uh, this is an, an extreme comparison, but to put the, the, the number of uh, VR and AR users into perspective, I compared it uh, with a technology that has really changed the world, like the smartphone. And in terms of constraints, there are a lot, I think. Uh, I just want to highlight price still uh, as one of the big constraints uh, in terms of uh, adoption of uh, immersive equipment. But I wanted to conclude with a final uh, question. Uh, it's simple, though I think it's interesting. Uh, as the definition of content quality changed, I personally think that uh, uh, content quality has become more multidimensional uh, if we compare it to the past. Uh, for example, uh, picture quality as uh, uh, the importance of picture quality has decreased, as you can see from the decreasing number of UHD services uh, and also the declining importance of imaging in our technology and trends roadmap. Conversely, other trends such as immersive, such as mobile uh, and others as well have become more important. Therefore, I, I want to conclude with this final message, which uh, I think is important for generally for the industry. Uh, while before uh, content quality was mostly about picture quality, uh, now picture quality is just one element to consider for media businesses, uh, uh, along with other features such as interactivity, data insights, and perhaps immersion in the future. Therefore, media businesses may have to prioritize some of these features in the future, particularly as uh, uh, budgets sometimes are flat uh, or declining. Um, and therefore, they may end up prioritizing those features, I think, that sometimes are more directly correlated with revenues, such as interactivity. Thanks so much. Uh, as I said, uh, I'll be around for the rest of the day if you want to ask some questions uh, about the presentation, if you want to provide some feedback. Uh, I'll be back in London in a couple of weeks to attend uh, BAM Live, which is uh, IBM's event. So if you want to talk about that, uh, uh, of course, I'm happy to talk about that too. Thanks so much.